in life in Christ. This one here is called the seed of the kingdom. Now, it's important to know, this is kind of neat holding the mic, but I'll, you'll notice on TV, I'll, I'll switch the mic. You know, that's what the entertainers used to do. That's why they put me behind the drums so I, the mic would stay stable. You can laugh at that, Daryl. Anyway, we've been teaching about the kingdom. Now, remember, so far we found out that God brought the kingdom, the spiritual kingdom of heaven, at Pentecost, didn't he? Say amen. So that was almost two or a little over 2,000 years ago. So here's how it happened. Jesus rose from the dead. He broke everything that was hindering the, the spirit of God from filling the earth. That's when the curtain rent from top to bottom, and the spirit was let out, and man was let in. Hello. Maybe you didn't know that. That's why I got my fake curtain here, so we'll talk about the curtain later. And so 40 days after Jesus' ascension, when he rose, rose up, God took him up, he sent his mantle, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit brought the kingdom of heaven. Now, somebody asked me the other day, what's the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? Well, the kingdom of heaven is a piece of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is the parent, and the kingdom of heaven was what Jesus brought through the Holy Spirit with every little bit of the kingdom of God, but just not all of it. Can you say amen? So it's kind of like bread dough. Anybody needed bread? And you took a piece of bread dough and you got it a little piece for yourself. I used to like to pop them in my mouth a little, you know, but the bread dough is still the bread dough, but it's separated. What God did is took a piece of his kingdom because of Jesus' death and resurrection and brought it into the earth, and we call that the kingdom of heaven. Say, I got it. You guys are really good. <laughs> but you know what? God is downloading by revelation his kingdom in our heart. How does he do that, BJ? By his word. Very good. So when you and I are in the word of God, it explodes the kingdom of God in our heart and begins to build up God's very kingdom. And when we hear the word of God and we begin to do it, just the simple things, then our foundation, the kingdom is being built in our heart. Now, what's so exciting is there a spiritual kingdom that people cannot see. Often we cannot see it. We experience it through faith. But you know what? It's there only for the believer in the spirit. You can't receive it as a sinner. The only thing of the kingdom of heaven you can receive is say, Jesus, forgive me in my heart. I accept Jesus. Then God downloads his, his spirit in you, and you have access to the invisible kingdom of God. Say amen. But God is also giving us his word. and We're to search the word of God. So we understand what part of the kingdom is ours and how it individually works in our own personal life. Say amen. Now, we're going to turn around and read some scripture. So we're going to call this the seed of the kingdom. Matthew, we're going to go up to there. Do you have Matthew 11, 11 up? All right. So nobody wants to see back my head. I don't want to see it. No, I'm joking. All right, Matthew 11, 11. Listen to what it said, and I'll explain. Assuredly, Jesus is talking here. I say to you, among those who are born of women, there has not been one greater than John the Baptist. But he who is least, now listen, in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. See, a lot of people don't understand what that means. Very simply, the Old Testament is fulfilled. John the Baptist was the greatest prophet of all the Old Testament, even though we didn't hear much of them. There's Elijah, there's all these prophets. But Je Jesus said of his own cousin, he's greater than all. But he said the least, now listen carefully, the least in the kingdom of heaven. That's you and I. We're in the kingdom of heaven now. Jesus hadn't died and rose, rose again back then. But he now he's died and rose again, sits at the right hand. We have a new covenant. So he was talking about any child of God that's born again is greater than the greatest prophet of the Old Testament. Now, wow, that's something to say. And who said that? Jesus did. That's because 
you and I have God dwelling in us. Say amen. Let me read my second scripture. John 3, 3. Jesus was addressing a religious man. This was a religious Jewish individual. Guy had a searching heart, was good. Oftentimes we can think we have arrived and then we tune everybody else out. Don't be that way. John 3, 3, Jesus answered Nicodemus and he said to him, most assuredly, in other words, if you don't get anything else, get this. I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot, and see the word S-E-E, that means he cannot perceive nor understand. Not just see it, but perceive it and understand it. The kingdom of what? God. Folks, the kingdom of heaven and kingdom of God are locked out of the human natural person. Unless they start seeking after Jesus, after God, nothing's open to them. That's why there's plenty of people maybe go to church, but you can tell there's no change in their life. Hello, how many here know God saved us as we are, but he's smart enough to take us somewhere else? Can you say amen? He accepted me fully, but he won't leave me in that condition. All right, so look. You cannot perceive the kingdom of God unless you become born again. Let's go to John 3, down two verses, 5 and 6. Listen, Jesus answered. Again, Nicodemus talking to him. He said, most assuredly, I say, unless one is born of water, natural birth. How many know you came out of a sack of water? If you didn't know that, mom has a, had a, you know, you were in, in a sack of water. I don't want to be too descriptive. And of the spirit, it's saying, listen, for a very important reason. Say, what is that reason? Do you believe that Satan was born here? No. God created Satan a long, long time ago. But he fell, and Satan wanted this planet. So this is directed to understanding what's of the kingdom of darkness, what's of the devil, what's not of. He says, unless you're born of water and of the spirit, you cannot what? Enter. Enter. In other words, go into the kingdom of God, kingdom of heaven. Do you see that? Do you see it? You cannot enter it. So let me ask you, is the devil born of water? No. The devil was never born. He was created. You and I were born. And we're born of the spirit because we got born again and we have Jesus in our heart. Say amen. So the Holy Spirit opens the door for you and I to come and go in the kingdom of heaven and to utilize all the tools and all the provisions that Jesus gave when we accepted him. Say, there comes a package with Jesus. Say amen. And when we walk and we talk with him, he begins to see that we're faithful. See, here's the problem. God will not invest his wisdom and his knowledge to somebody who can't even be faithful? Come on. Now, I'm not referring. Again, everybody thinks I'm in church. Is he talking about me? Is he talking about me? No, I'm not. Okay, no. But people that don't know how to be consistent and stuff never develop very quickly because it takes consistent care under the care of the master. So how do I go about doing that? Well, you first meet with them, and then throughout the day, just talk with them. How many years have you had a close friend, and you couldn't wait till maybe recess or maybe in between classes where you met up and you talked, and, oh, you just got along? Well, that's what God wants you to do throughout the day. When you're mowing the lawn, Mike, talk with God out loud. Not in your head, out loud. Yeah, mumble and talk with God, laugh with him. Why? Because he's in your heart. Become his friend. You want friends? I want friends. All of us need to do the same thing. But see, a lot of times we don't think we can do that. See, I can. See, you cannot enter the kingdom unless you're born naturally and born of the spirit. One more scripture, Matthew 6, You can quote it for me. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all the things you have need of will be added to you. Now, here's a paradox. I believe all my life 
to work hard and make a living. How many believe that? It's right. But to work hard without God is foolish. I'm going to pause for a minute before you think about it. Everything we do, we're supposed to do in Jesus now. How do we go about that? Just go through your routine and bring God. Talk with God all the time. You're mowing the lawn. You're cooking dinner. You're loving your family. Somebody in the phone is yelling you. say, hold on. Thank you, Jesus. And then, you, you know, you keep the Lord involved. Say amen. You can't restrict God from your life and expect it to continue to run. Well, we all know that. So listen to this again. Seek you first. That means put God first. Everyone say, what's that mean? That means the first person you say hello to is, yeah, not yourself. Ah, no, God. Second thing is tell them you love them. Oh, it might be real hard. Remember, you're not telling them from your head. Everyone point your head. Say, this is full of a lot of weird stuff. Yeah, it is. You, you talk to him like a child. Lord, good morning. Thank you. Why? Because he loves you. He's not mad at you. He didn't get grumpy at night, you know. Right. Can, why? When you put him first, he'll be first. Can you say amen? And he will take control and protection of your life. So every day, continue to do that. Why? It becomes a habit. And folks, good habits are just as hard to break as bad habits. Say amen. All right, so let's get into this. The seed of the kingdom. We're going to cover these four areas. Number one, we're going to cover we are to know the mysteries of the kingdom. Say amen. They're hidden from humans, natural people, but they're revealed unto his children. Two, we're going to in talk and, and, and share how important it is the, to have the implanted seed. Now, folks, what's in a seed? Life. If I plant a cotton seed, what's in the seed? Cotton. <laughs> and God's life that makes it grow. Now, folks, does the person that plants the cotton seed go out every day and worry whether or not it's going to develop? Hello? Do they? Well, no. Why are you doing that? You just go to God and make sure he develops you. Remember, life is in the seed. Say that with me. Life is in the seed, right? So if you plant, if it's a healthy seed, you know it's going to grow. Say amen, all you horticulturists. But who's the seed in our heart? Jesus. How many here know that he's going to grow? But here's what the enemy does. He gets our eyes off of Jesus, the one who grows up the seed, and gets our eyes on what not and what's not working so that the growth of the seed is hindered because it shuts down the lack of God's nutrients. Did you get it? So take good care of the seed. Okay? Take good care of the seed. You already know if the ground's bad or not. Put some fertilizer in it. Hello, can you say amen? But take good care of the seed. How do I do that? By giving it to God. So, Lord, I plant this in Jesus' name. So if you need healing in your life, what scripture should you be planting in your life? You got it. And then let it grow. All right, we're going to cover number three. Automatically growth happens with every seed planted. So if you're going to be fearful, you're going to talk problems, those are seeds also. You don't want them to grow. Say amen. And then fourthly, a wise man keeps himself in God. All right, those four areas again. We are to know the mysteries of the kingdom. We're to look at the implanted word of God. Amen. And spiritual downloads. Three, the automatic growth of the seed, and four, being a wise man. Let's go to point one. We are to know the mysteries of God. Go with me to Matthew chapter 13. Look at verse 10 and 11. <laughs> one thing about uh, holding a mic, if you have to you know, cough or hiccup or something. It's not going to be on there. You can just move it away. 
Don't you love those people? This is fun while you're finding this scripture. Okay, here we go. Matthew 13, listen carefully. It says, and the disciples came and said to him, Jesus, why do you speak to them in story form, parables? And he answered and said to them, now he's talking to his disciples, because, now look at how he answers, because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. What does he mean by that? Natural people can't receive the spiritual things of God because Satan has hidden it from them. Can you say, oh me? The God of this world blinds the mind of those that believe not. There we go. Then he goes on. For whoever, then it goes on, because I has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, not been given to them. For whoever has, when you start growing, when you start learning about the Lord, you come consistently to Jesus, to church, learning about the word, learning about the word, more will be given you. But, and he will have an, listen, he will have an abundance, but whoever does not keep consistent, keep coming to God, even what he seems to have will be taken away from him. Now, who's the thief in the Bible? Satan is. That means that God doesn't take away things he gives you. God doesn't put sickness on you. All these problems in the world are from Satan and human beings listening to him. Uh, it's open now. Daryl, it's open now. Anyway, um, with that, they're listening. So the world's crumbling. The system is corrupt. But you and I listen to a different leader. Can you say amen? So here we go. All right? So, but it's given unto you to know. So if you desire to want to know, more will be given to us. If we desire, then God says, I'm going to give you abundance. See, that's me. Now, I know all of you have been experiencing God's blessings. Why? Because of your consistent practice of the word. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Let's look at this scripture, verses 6 and 7, and then 10 and 12. Listen to how God reveals his word to us. Okay. However, we speak wisdom. Paul is talking to the church. Among those who are mature, say, that's me. Now, folks, I don't know about you, but there are times I'm not so mature. I wish it was, you know, and you aren't either. But the times we are mature, listen to me carefully, is when we walk from the inside out. We're not emotionally upset. We're not ruled by pain or suffering. When we learn to walk with Jesus from the spirit man out, that's our mature zone. Everyone say mature zone? Exactly. You see, good ground is your spirit man. Your spirit man's always good ground because who lives in it? God. Come on, be with me. The, the, what the things in the parable of the sower, what he's talking about is those that have God in their heart have to pay attention how they listen. Because if you don't listen with the spirit realm, you're going to miss what God is saying. So therefore, he spoke to them in story form, but he spoke to his disciples directly. Hello? Now, a lot of people, when they pick their Bible up, it seems like they're reading a puzzle. But here's the problem. You're picking it up in the natural man, trying to read that godly scripture in the natural. Just take a minute and say, Lord, help me to understand the word. Don't start at the beginning of the book. Start in the ending. Start at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Why? It's the new covenant. If you have two covenants on your house, the old one was fulfilled and a new one was given you with better promises, then you will study the new covenant until you master that. Then go back into the Old Testament and you could see where the problems lie and learn from their mistakes. Someone say amen. But people don't do that. They try to start at the beginning of the book, and they get to Leviticus and Numbers, and they go, ah! <laughs> are you with me? However, we speak wisdom to monk, those who are in the spirit mature. That is the wisdom of, not of this age or the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. How many here know leaders around the world are coming to nothing? Take a look. 
They're falling apart. Only the ones that don't love God are falling apart all over. You just don't hear about them. Okay. But we speak the wisdom of God in a hidden teaching in the spirit realm, a hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So when I speak, it sounds, if you're listening naturally, it's not going to register. But if you say, Lord, help me to hear what Pastor Kerry or whoever is preaching the word of God in the spirit and talk to me through the word of God that's coming out, then he will bring by the spirit his revelation and download it into your spirit past your head. I don't know about you, but my head seems to mess things up. And I'm looking at you, it doesn't mean that yours doesn't. No, we all have problems here because there's two systems working in your brain. One is a carnal thing. Another is a godly thing. And sometimes you could just kind of feel that going on. That means, hey, you're supposed to control your thoughts and cast down the negatives. All right. Then go with me as we read on. Look at verse 10. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 10 and 12. But God has revealed them to us. Say, me. So God reveals everything by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yes, the deep things of God. You see, God is monitoring your spirit and your heart. And if you're not ready to receive the word, you won't. But if you're ready to receive the word, he'll download special revelations to you individually. For what man knows the things of a man except for the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God. No one knows except the spirit of God. So guess what? We got born again. We welcome the Holy Spirit and his gifts and his kingdom to download into our spirit man, bypassing our head, those things that we need to know to help our walk become better. Say amen. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't like to repeat the same dumb things over and over again. And if you think about it, those dumb things, we first didn't pray about it. And second time, we didn't ask God the wisdom that we should be doing it in. Some would say, wisdom. We have God's wisdom in us. Now we receive not the spirit of the world to act like the world, our old ways, forget all that, but the spirit which is from God that we might know. This is an interesting Greek word. It means to know by experiencing. How many here know it's great to drive a car? You've been told, but it wasn't until you got in that car and you enjoyed it. See, one knowing is knowing about. Now, listen, this is the knowing Jesus talking. The other knowing is knowing by experience. Say amen. You want to know by experience what you've heard all the good about God. So you are, as you take God, practice his word, and interact with him throughout the day, he takes you into all the benefits of God. Can you say amen? Now, I keep forgetting I have this beautiful tablet. All right. So let's go ahead and look at um, the second point. So how many got that? Say amen. I am going to be given all the mysteries of God. You just are. That's part of your inheritance. Now, there are a couple of scriptures that says God will withhold things from you if you're not ready for them. Hello? But he's not going to withhold anything good from you. Hello? He might not say, hey, your cousin always wanted to kill you, but they're not going to kill you now. He, we withhold that from you. Can you say amen? So your God is a very, very good God. Let's go. Point two is here's what I want. The implanted seed is very special because the seed in our heart is who? Jesus Christ. He's been spiritually downloaded. How did we get Jesus, who rose from the dead, Michael, to get him into our heart. How do we get God in the book that we know about from there into our heart? Everyone, you asked him in. Didn't Jesus say, ask and you shall? <laughs> so you said, Father, forgive me my sin. Now listen, get the words right because you might have to lead somebody to the Lord. Forgive me my sin. Come into my heart. Welcome him into your heart just like a house. And Lord, 
have access to any room. Go into the fridge, shop. Lord, I always often tell the Lord, Lord, this is your five acres. Come if you're weary, if you're tired. Now listen to humor in this. Come and sit here and, Lord, dine with me. And he's like, I can hear him laughing. I never get tired, and I'm never hungry if I don't want to eat. But he does, okay? So the idea is we want to always be open. Everything that we have, always be open for God to walk amongst us. Can you say amen? To stay in that open case. So we need to value the seed that's in our heart. So go back with me to Matthew 13, and let's look at the seed. We're going to look not so much as the ground, but as the seed itself, okay? We're going to cover four grounds, but we're going to not emphasize the ground. We're going to emphasize Jesus, the seed. All right. In verse 10, therefore, hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears, now listen, you have to hear the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. See, they're trying to listen with their head, not their heart. Then the wicked one comes and snatches away that which is sown in their heart. And that is he who receives seed by the wayside. In other words, they could care less. They're just happy to get their way. They never get seed down deep. So say, oh me. But he who received the seed on stony places. Now listen up. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no stability or root in himself, but endures only for a while. And then when hard times, tribulation, or persecution arises because of the word that's in them, immediately they stumble. Verse 22, now he who receives seed among the thorns. This one here is tricky. Among the thorns, as he who hears the word, see all of them hear the word, and the cares of this life, cares means worries, And the deceitfulness of riches, oh, if I won the lotto, my life would be better. Choke the word. Listen, it says, the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. Folks, God is not upset about you being rich. He's upset that riches have control of you. Hello, your bills? You could be a pauper and your bills control you. God wants you out of that system and in his system. So we have to learn to operate in the spirit. Hello? You see, because we are religious not more than I think we are spiritual, have God ask you to switch you into the spiritual realm and get rid of all religious practices in your mind. Say amen. All right. So I'm, let me continue to read. But he who receives, this is what I want you to see. Say, that's me. This is you. Because you receive the word in your spirit, man. Who lives in your spirit, man? Jesus does. Is he the word? Yes. The word and Jesus are one. So if he's already living in your spirit, when God gives it to you spiritually, he goes right into Christ. Christ explodes and it comes up into the eyes of your understanding. So you are good ground if you receive the word in the spirit. That means you've got to prep yourself to be in the spirit when you come to church. Say amen. That means you could have all your fish and basket full and nobody else is eating. Then he goes on and he says, on good ground and understands it, And indeed bears, he didn't say might, he said indeed bears fruit and produces some 100, some 30, some 60. Now, people don't understand. That's just progression. How many know your seed grows in progression? It doesn't pop up all at once. Stop looking at popping up all at once. Start sowing. Let's say it's a little tight. Speak prosperity. Start sowing the word. Why? Because the miracle is in the word you sow in love. So if you're under attack, don't talk the attack. Say, Lord, I call upon the Lord, and I speak deliverance, and I speak the word. Why? Now you're going to have a harvest, and it's going to blow that thing away. Are you sick? Is something in your body not working? The Bible says that the word of God is medicine to all your flesh. Start speaking the word to it. 
Every day, speak out loud, not in your head. Lord, knee, you're going to work. Knee, you're going to receive the word. And no, it might not happen overnight. It might not take a week or two. But all of a sudden, if you get your eyes off of it, boom, you find yourself walking around and go, wow, wow. You see, you can't concentrate on the wrong stuff. We have to concentrate on what God reveals to us as much as possible. Say amen. So listen to this. This is really good. Galatians chapter 1, 11 and 12 says, But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I, it came through what? The revealing. Revelation just means the revealing of Jesus Christ. So the more he went to God, the more God revealed his plan and purpose. And that's why the enemy tries to keep us from going to God. I just don't have time to be with God. <laughs> well, you'll, you'll continue to break apart, and then you'll have to be with God. Let's get past that. Go with me to James. Look at this, chapter 1. James, the half-brother of Jesus. James 1, verse 21 and 22. Therefore, lay aside all this earthly foolishness and filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with humility, with meekness, the engrafted or implanted word. We receive it by revelation, Pastor. Yeah, and receive it. Be open to receive. Every time this church is open to sit under the words, get there, receive it, keep receiving it. Say amen. Receive the implanted word, which able to what? Save. The word save there, let's just use this word, means stabilize your, your soul. How many of you ever had your mind overwhelmed? Don't raise your hand. You sow the word. You get in the word. You stay humble. Feed the word in you. Why? It stabilizes your thinking. It stabilizes and refreshes your soul. Didn't Jesus say that? He says, come unto me, all you that are heavy laden and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light, and you will find rest to your soul. But see, it's you not being with God, not talking with God throughout the day that keeps you agitated, keeps you fumbling and bumbling. And God says he doesn't want us that way. Say amen. Would you want your child to be that way? Of course not. How much more does your heavenly father want to take care of us? But see, folks, folks, here's the key. You will have as much peace as you allow God to change your flesh because your flesh is the one that's always getting out of hand. Look at your neighbor and say, is he talking to me? <laughs> I'm talking to all of us. So you present your flesh to God daily, and he keeps it back. He keeps the weed back. All right. No. So, therefore, lay aside all filthiness, overflow, receive with meekness the implanted word. Can I say amen? All right, my next point. The seed automatically grows under right conditions. Who's the seed in our heart? Just say Jesus. It's okay. Treat him like a seed. Now, did he come downloaded in our heart complete? Yes. Because a seed, when you plant it, is complete. It's just not developed. We think complete means fully developed. No. God, when you accepted Jesus, he came into your heart. It'll help you as a seed, complete and full. But you have to bring yourself to God so he can broke, break open your shell. How many know that seeds have an old shell? Raise your hands if you know that. Good, good. And that old shell has to crack away. So pinch yourself and say, old shell. <laughs> We bring ourselves to God daily so that the old life cracks away and the new life brings forth. If you don't do that, you're going to hinder your own spiritual growth, and you don't want to do that because you have a thing called the will, and the will will either open to God or shut off because you have the right to open or shut your will. Say amen. So the seed automatically will develop if you take your eyes off of the development and put them back on the Lord. Matthew 13 again, 
Verse 31 and 32, let me read it to you. In another parable he spoke forth, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. He uses a teeny little seed. Jesus in your heart when you first accept him is like a little teeny seed. A little teeny. You bring him to God, bring yourself to God, you talk to God, and he develops inside of us. But your head's going to get jealous, your flesh is going to get out of line, and that's why you keep bringing yourself to God for him to kick back the old man and bring forth the new. Say amen. So you're like a mustard seed. He's like a mustard seed in us. And he took and someone took and sowed in his field, which indeed is least in all the seeds. And when it is sown, it grown and is greater than the herbs that become the rest in the tree or becomes as a tree. Now, doesn't the Bible call us trees? Yeah, Isaiah, trees of righteousness. Isn't that interesting? So the seed grows and develops, so it even becomes like a tree. Oh, wow. We want God to take over our life and become strong in us. Say amen. And indeed, the least of all seeds, and become a tree so that the birds of the air come and nest in his bread. I used to think, Lord, what are you saying there? He says, son, the fowl of the air is the devil. He's the prince of power of the air. And when your life begins to become a success and God begins to develop your life, you're going to have great influence for the kingdom is dominion, power, jurisdiction, influence. Can you say amen? So as you grow in that, you're going to have power and influence to change your surroundings. Satan doesn't want you to grow like that. He wants you to always be a struggling Christian, barely keeping your head above water. I mean, come on. He's a master at rerouting Christians. You need to focus, focus. Anyway, that's the truth. Now, we're trees of righteousness. Can you say amen? The, and the God takes care of his own tree. Now, look what it says. The bowels of the air will come and lodge. Listen, always, since the very first of my preaching, when I preached my first sermons in my mom's living room there in Prairie Ridge in a trailer, First week we had seven, second week we have 15, third week we have 30, and then we needed a building. But even when I was that young, Satan had sent adversaries, people who are not of God, actually Satan worshipers, had sent two in there. One was a chalice, I'm going to tell you a little story, the other was a witch. What do you mean, pastor? Are you Come on, it's time for Christians to grow up. You know, religion is blinding, and that's why Satan made it. You're not a religious person. You're a Christian walk with God. Okay. So anyway, she brought her a little chalice. You know what a chalice is? It's a cup. And some people are so drugified, they're so stupefied, that they can, witches can fill them with demons and bring them to church and use them to throw demons out into the congregation. And that is exactly what she started to do. And God gave me a dream about her. So when she came the second time, I confronted her. I says, you, and I didn't want to mention names because I grew up with some of them, okay? I says, you are messing with witchcraft, and you're filling him with demons. He hasn't got a clue which day it is, and so you're flicking them out in my congregation. Isn't it amazing when you do that? All my kids cry at the same time. All the distractions go wild. I bind you, and I cast you. She got up, started screaming, and ran out that little box. We had a church at that time was no bigger than this. It was packed with people. There was only one way in and one way out, and guess she went out. Hello. And then about a minute or two, Dingleberry Chalice Man finally figured out she was gone, and he ran out too. Listen to me. We need to wise up to the spiritual end of things. When you're walking with Jesus, he alerts you at all this. You don't have to be alerted. You don't have to be freaked out. You just walk with Jesus, and you know the demons will part their ways before you unless they want to purposely ruin your life. Then you confront them and say, get lost. Say amen. All right, let's get past all of that. I didn't mean to go on the side trail, but you need to know that you're going to have to cast some spirits away periodically. So the seed, look at verse. So this parable is, it's like a mustard seed. So he goes on, Second Peter, look at this. Chapter 1, verse 10 and 15, on the seed. Therefore, brethren, 
be even more diligent. Get after it. Be habitual. Make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, he's talking about developing, you will never stumble. How many are into that? I don't like stumbling. If you read what those things are, they're the things that the fruit of God in your life comes forth. Add to your virtue, you know, excellence, and on and on. Okay? For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance. See, our job is to be with Jesus, to walk like Jesus, and with God's help, for sure. He says, so if you do this, for so an entrance, listen, will be supplied to you abundantly into an everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So the more with God we become, the more like God we become, the more he helps us along that way, the more an entrance is given to you, access to all of the riches of the kingdom of heaven. Now, I want to ask you, do you know what they all are? I don't. But we want to have them experience. Can you say amen? Some of you have special assignments for God. You're the only one like you. So if we don't get with it, God won't be able to express himself through you the way he wants to. And that's the exciting part because all we have to do from God is put ourselves in his hands and listen to what he tells us to do. All the rest we don't have to be so concerned about doing it ourselves. We'd be concerned and just laying it out for us and following what he wants us to do. Boy, there's not much stress in that. I'm not saying st sit still and wait for God to bring blessings to you. That's ridiculous. I'm saying don't start your day, your work day, any day without bringing God along the way so he can abundantly bless you. Say amen. So the seed, if you plant the seed in a lack, you need healing, plant the healing seed. If you need prosperity, plant prosperity seed. But you got to speak it. By his stripes, I'm healed. Not going to be healed. I was healed. Speak it. The woman with the issue of blood, she kept on saying for days, if I but touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. She was so determined, she crawled through the crowd. How determined are you to get God and all his benefits operating in your life? I'm pretty determined. I bet you you are too. For this reason, I will not neglect, Peter says, this is verse 12, to remind you of these things. Church, the word of God is a seed. We have to plant it in order for it to work. The earth that we plant it in is our heart. Two, the seed is designed to grow and produce on its own because it's God. Therefore, we don't worry about the seed. We just keep ourselves in the condition with God so it flourishes. Thirdly, the kingdom of heaven is replacing the kingdom of darkness, and you are the carriers of that. Your job is to go into all the world and speak, preach the kingdom of the gospel. Hello, speak it. What do we do in the churches talking about each other and we're condemning one another and we're wondering if the rapture is going to come before our trip and all that? You're not speaking the kingdom. And that's where a lot of Christians fail. They get stale. Their eyes are on how they're always. And they, oh, I'm, yeah, yeah. Where's your faith? Listen, there have been times where I've had things wrong with me and if I didn't have faith, I would have died. And I know you experience things like that, but you have to stick with it, plant the seed so it grows up and heals the situation. Hello? Weigh what you say. Are you telling everybody about the owie? Are you always talking about what the owie does every year? Are you get the owie? You see, no, no, no. You're to preach the word and get the seed. Say amen. Finally, next point. A wise man keeps himself. Say, I'm wise. Amen. You have God in you, right? So he's wise, isn't he? So who's in control, you or God? You guys are hesitant. We all want God to be in charge of our life. Say, amen. So how come he seems like at times he's not? Because those are times when you step out in front of him. 
you got to ask God to help slow you down. Now listen. And find his rhythms for you. You all run on a different spiritual wavelength. All the same Jesus. But some of you have different assignments. So you need to find that rhythm and that flow of God and co continue to do it. Continue to go after it and get, try to keep your eyes off of everything else. Because usually that mostly is distractions. And when you throw that seed out and you plant it, and you know you put it in the ground, you do what you were required to do, then thank the Lord for its harvest. Put your eyes on another crop. If you've got somebody in your family, mention their name every day. Slap your hands up and say, Lord, I sow the seeds of salvation in their life. I speak by them, by your stripes. You are going to save them and bring them in. You see, and you declare it. What are you doing? You're planting the seed to automatically grows. But if you never plant it, it won't grow. Instead, we talk the problem. Oh, I don't see any change. Who told you that? Whenever the devil tells me not to do something or you're not being able to do this, I laugh and do the opposite. He's literally a sniveling little snot. I love to say that. He is, because he's always going to challenge your faith because he doesn't want you to get what he could never get, and that is salvation. And you got it. Say amen. All right, finishing. First John chapter 5. Look at this. Look at this. We're going to expound on this a bit. First John chapter 5, 18 through 21. We know that whoever is born of God, wave your hands at me, does not sin. <laughs> now, folks, religious people don't get this scripture at all. First of all, who lives in your spirit, man? God? Come on, speak after me. God. The more you confess him, the stronger he is. God's in me. Well, is he the wisest thing you know? So let him run your life. Let him make your decisions. Before you make a choice, what you're going to do, say, God, how do you feel about this? Now, he's never going to turn you down on something good. But he does know the path ahead. He's never going to give you a job on Sunday where you can't come to church. If he does, that's not God. You did that. We do a lot of things. So not to make you feel bad, but you need to look at what this says. We're born of God, say amen. So who lives in our spirit? God does. Say it strong. Can God sin? Now you're getting it. If you're letting God run your life from the inside out, slowing down, finding his rhythm, you'll find yourself making far less mistakes and being entrapped like you used to be. Why? Because Satan cannot trick Jesus who lives in your heart. Hello? Certainly can trick you. But see, you're not living you now. You're letting God live you. Or live through you. So it says, cannot sin. Now listen, he goes on further to say, because he has been born of God. The one that's born of God keeps himself, guards himself. In other words, places himself in God's hands. And the wicked one does what? Come on, read with me. He can't touch you. Now, does that say what it, I think it says? Do you believe the word? Why is Satan touching you so much? Because there's too much of you in charge. Now, don't get upset to say, Lord, keep getting me in, getting that taken care of. Because when you keep yourself in God's hands, he's, the devil has to go through God to get to you. Hello? So he's the rock that we hide in. He's the cliff. He's our strong fortress, a strong and mighty tower. Why do you think he said that all through the Psalms? Because he wants you to run into him and be safe. Proverbs 133 says, He that listens to me diligently shall dwell safely. Huh? Why? Because if there's a pit right there, God's going to say, don't step there. Are you with me? Are your brains about ready to wear out now? 
you know. That's how, that's why when you come to church, bring your heart, your spirit, and shut your brain back. You're not trying to understand. You're just absorbing. Say amen. It's like a shower. Do you have to understand the shower coming down on you? Come on, laugh with me. No, you just enjoy the shower. Well, I'm showering you with revelation. Take it, grab it, run with it, be a doer of the word. Say amen. So he keepeth himself, and the wicked one touches them not. Now listen to this. And we know that, okay, and we know that the Son of God has come. Say amen. Given us this understanding that we may know him. We're getting to know him. We're knowing him. Who is true? How many know Jesus is true? And we are in him. How many are in Christ? Who is true? And in his Son, are we in Jesus? Son, Jesus Christ, this is what it means to be part of the true God and eternal life. Folks, years ago, Adam fell away from God. But Jesus, as the last Adam, came and regrafted us into the vine. Now we, through Christ, can grow back into fullness, completeness, and wholeness. It's only up to you how much you want to surrender to God and let God live through you. I guarantee your life will have much more abundance, less mistakes. And this is what the gospel of Jesus Christ is about. I'm not saying everything is going to be sunshine. Absolutely not. In fact, the, in the world, you're going to have tribulation. Do you ever understand that? Folks, we're not in the world we're, and, or of the world. We are of God. Can you say Amen. So we have to put our eyes up. We have to start focusing on God. We have to start believing his word and doing his word. Why? Because we're operating in a different system and kingdom that replaces the broken one. Amen. I don't care what price of gas is. God will always see my tank is full. I don't care how much price of food is. You'll always have a meal. You're a child of the living God. God never suffers the righteous forsaken nor the offspring of the righteous begging bread. And finally finishing, say amen, he's going to finish. Amen. Galatians 3, verses 1 through, uh, excuse me, Colossians 3, 1 through 3 tells us where we're really at every day if you just maintain your walk with him. Remember, if you make a mistake, God does not condemn you. He says, get up, let's walk it through, let's fix it. But as a sinner... Oh, there's a lot of condemnation. But you're not a sinner. You're a son of God now. Colossians 3 says, if then you were risen with Christ, you are because you're in Christ. Seek, go after, crave after those things which are above. Get your eyes up, up. Stop looking at the world as going away. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. He's there for you. For me, right there, protecting us, guiding over us if we keep ourselves in his hands. But you've got to keep yourself in his hands. Well, what if I fall out? Just get back in. There's no requirement. Get up. Keep going. Say amen. Okay, set your mind on things above. Well, I don't know about you. Some mornings I get up, my mind's on everything else but God. I open my mouth, listen, and say, good morning, God. And my mind shuts off to listen to what my mouth has to say. Have you ever had a worried mind at night where you can't seem to sleep? Just open your mouth and say, thank you, Lord, praise you, Lord, and your brain will shut down to hear your mouth. So you can actually sing praises to sleep. Don't be loud. But sing praises. And many, many times it will happen. Hello. Stop registering what you're feeling and sensing above what the word and the spirit is saying to you. If this morning you were blessed, look at the rest of this scripture, it says. For our life is hidden in Christ. Did you see that part? Our life is where? Now, folks, if it's hidden, what's it hidden from? You see, people will read over things or read over things. You're hidden when you walk with Christ from the devil. 
What? What? Yeah, he blinds him so he can't observe your life during the day. So you get up, present yourself to God, get yourself under the shield, get yourself full, get yourself cranked, get yourself going, and stop sitting around saying, I can't do it because of this. No, you make an effort like the woman with the issue of blood, and you will be set free. If you got something out of this this morning, would you give the Lord a praise? Come on. <laughs>